I'm going to use the x plus h instead of x plus delta x. All right, so f of x plus h, okay, is it still? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to use x plus h instead of x plus delta x. It's the same thing, just using a different variable. I don't have to use the delta x there, okay? So that means in my function, I'll go about my color coding here, where I see x, I'm replacing it with x plus h. So now f of x plus h is the square root of x plus h plus 1. And all of that's under the square root. There's nothing that we can do to simplify right here. So that means we just get to jump straight to our limit definition. This time it's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, It's the same definition, just using h instead of delta x. So I'm actually going to use some notation here. I'm going to say f prime of x is equal to the limit as x of, or excuse me, h approaches 0 of the square root of x plus h plus 1 plus, not plus, minus, sorry, minus f of x, which was just the square root of x plus 1, and that is all over h. Now, if we were to just plug in h right now, what would happen? We get 0 over 0, or excuse me, if we just plugged in 0 for h, we would get 0 over 0. Okay, the top would give us the square root of x plus 1 minus the square root of x plus 1, that's 0. The bottom would give us 0. So we've got to do some kind of algebraic manipulation to fix this problem. What do we do when we have square roots that give us 0 over 0? Multiply by the conjugate. Yay! I trained y'all well. Okay. Now, in this case, it's the conjugate of the numerator. It's, it's the conjugate of whatever's involving the square root. It's not always the denominator. The denominator and the have it conjugate. It's just h. It doesn't even have one. <clears throat> now, remember, this looks super nasty and intimidating, but uh, we don't actually multiply out the part that doesn't have two square roots. Okay, so we're not actually going to multiply out the denominator. And when we multiply out the numerator, it's really not that bad because really all that happens is the square roots cancel. So we are left with x plus h plus 1 when we multiply the square root of x plus h plus 1 times the square root of x plus h plus 1. It just gives us x plus h plus 1. The outside and the inside cancel. We have a positive times a negative. We got to put parentheses because now we got a minus in front of the square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1 is just x plus 1. Well, that's not all that bad. We do not multiply out the bottom. We just need to rewrite it. <coughs> Now, look at what happens on the top. If we distribute that negative, what are we left with? H. That's it. The x cancels, the 1 cancels. All we're left with is H. Remember that from our limits problems involving these radicals? It wasn't quite that simple, but it did boil down to whatever we had in front of our parentheses in the bottom. So we can cancel those H's. Guess what? Our problem is gone. We've got the limit as H approaches 0. We haven't evaluated the limit yet of 1 over the square root of X plus H plus 1 plus U plus the square root of X plus 1. Now we can plug in 0 for h. And what happens when we do that? We're just, we just
just have the square root of x plus 1 plus the square root of x plus 1. That means we have two square roots of x plus 1. That is the derivative of this function. That is f prime of x. So that's kind of interesting. When we had polynomial functions, okay, when we had a quadratic, its derivative was a linear function. When we had a linear function, its derivative was a constant function. So it's kind of like we're decreasing in degree with polynomials. With square roots, the derivative is another square root that's closely related to the original square root. Okay, <clears throat> so that's what we do with radicals. Let's look at a rational example. And probably going to end up handling it similar. Well, this isn't a complex fraction, so it's not going to be that bad. One over two square roots of x plus one. Okay, so let's look at the function negative three over x plus two, a rational function. Just for the sake of review, what do we know about this rational function just by looking at its equation? It has a Lovely, it has a vertical asymptote at negative two, meaning the limits as we approach negative two are gonna be headed towards positive and negative infinity. I'm not gonna go through the process of figuring out which one's which, but um, that's what we're looking at, okay? Uh, let's see here, the left would be positive infinity because it's negative three, so it flips it over. Anyways, um, all right, let's get back to the derivative problem. Okay, f of x plus h. So in my function, I am replacing x with x plus h. Similar to the radical function, can't do any simplifying right here. That it is what it is. That that's it. So let's plug it into our limit definition. First of all, let me label this as this is f prime of x. This is the derivative of f. It is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of negative three over x plus h plus two minus f of x, negative 3 over x plus 2, all of that is over h. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I don't like subtracting a negative, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that into adding a positive, okay? Subtracting f of x is really, in this case, adding uh, negative f of x. Okay. Now, do y'all remember what we did when we had to do these limits? If we plug in zero right now, we're going to end up with zero over zero. It's a complex fraction. So we need to multiply by the LCD. The LCD here is kind of big because we've got x plus h plus 2 and x plus 2. So we've got to go through and multiply everything by both of those. But the good news is some of that's going to cancel. Don't forget to multiply it on the bottom. That's where most people mess up. Okay. So our first term, the x plus h plus 2 cancels, so we've got negative 3 times x plus 2. In our second term, the x plus 2 cancels, so we have plus 3 times x plus h plus 2. And that's all over x times x, excuse me, h times x plus 2 times x plus h plus 2. I promise it's going to simplify. It's not going to be that crazy. 
Okay, so when we distribute the negative 3, we get negative 3x minus 6. When we distribute the positive 3, we get 3x plus 3h plus 6. Ooh, that's looking nice. Because da, 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 3x's cancel, 6's cancel. All we have is 3h over h times x plus 2 times x plus h plus 2. Are y'all okay with me canceling the h's in the same line? It only happens after all that other stuff cancels. I'm just saving myself some space. If you want to do that on a separate line, I would rather you do that than get confused. I'm just trying to conserve space. So all we have left in the numerator is 3. In the denominator, we have x plus 2 times x plus h plus 2. No longer have an issue with plugging in 0 for h. So I'm going to do that. then that means I have x plus 2 times x plus 2. So I'm just going to write that as x plus 2 squared. And that is the derivative of negative 3 over x plus 2. Its derivative is positive 3 over x plus 2 squared. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I don't know. That should be prime. That should not be negative 1. That would be the inverse. It's not the inverse. It's the derivative. Talking and writing at the same time does not work well. 